Good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk. Uh, today, we are going to talk about the hardening automation using uh, Cube Spray. Uh, but first of all, uh, let me introduce myself. This will be the most boring part of this talk. Um, who am I? My name is uh, Alessio Greggi. <coughs> I'm a Kubernetes developer at Armo Security. Uh, I'm a full-time teen opener for my cat, uh, an avid uh, book reader, and uh, in my free time also uh, try to do a, an open source contributor. Uh, you can find me on GitHub and Twitter with uh, this unique account, which is uh, Allegra91. So let's start the talk. Um, a little introduction and uh, a little disclaimer. Uh, when I did this work, uh, uh, it has been in uh, September, uh, maybe August, I was working for another company. Uh, this company is uh, named Clastix, which is a little startup in Italy. Uh, it's a small team. Uh, we were seven people. Uh, now they are six. Um, <laughs> but it's, <coughs> it's a really nice startup. Uh, and uh, their focus uh, uh, were were on the Kubernetes multi-tenancy. So uh, they essentially uh, were developing, uh, we were developing uh, a couple of uh, operators to manage the multi-tenancy in Kubernetes uh, with uh, two different approaches. Uh, this approach are uh, the soft one uh, with a capsule and uh, an, art, uh, an art one with a Kamaji. Uh, capsule, uh, you can think to capsule as a, a namespace as a service. So. Um, people that want to use Capsule essentially provide a namespace as a service for people that are uh, joining their, uh, their cluster. Otherwise, uh, with the Kamaji, you are essentially providing a um, control plane as a service. So uh, usually uh, these this operators are used by uh, little um, uh, cloud providers. Uh, so that they want, for example, uh, provide their own uh, control plane as a service and so on and so forth. But you can also use them uh, to separate uh, logically the, uh, the department in your, um, in your company. Uh, and for this thing, uh, maybe it's better capsule. Uh, so that said, uh, this, this is the uh, environment introduction. Let's see the, the use case that uh, brings us to um, adopt uh, this solution. So uh, implementing some feature, so some uh, security feature for uh, Cube Spray. So uh, our customers, as I said, uh, were little cloud providers. Um, so essentially what, what they were doing, uh, they were sharing their infrastructure uh, with uh, external actors, and uh, hopefully these, uh, these external actors uh, are not uh, attackers, but it also could happen. Uh, so uh, what they asked to us uh, um, um, was to protect uh, their infrastructure uh, from external actors. So. Um, they asked uh, uh, for uh, an hardened solution um, along with uh, the multi-tenancy and uh, specifically for the CIS benchmarks. Um, so uh, what we did was to, uh, to understand uh, the situation, uh, to understand how we can uh, approach the, the, this, uh, this, thi this thing. And we also started to thinking about uh, which uh, guideline um, was the, the best one to, uh, to do this thing. Um, there are a lot of uh, uh, frameworks uh, that provide uh, security guidelines. We choose the, the CIS because uh, it's one of the most common. Uh, also, it's, uh, it has a great community behind. Uh, it has also a long story. I think they started uh, 20 years, uh, years ago. Um, and also because uh, a lot of customers asked us for uh, the CIS compliance. Uh, so probably it was uh, the, best, uh, the best solution uh, also for, the, for us. And uh, in the end, uh, another thing that uh, they 
uh, repeatedly asked uh, was a 24-7 technical support. Now, as you can understand, the behind seven people uh, were really hard to achieve this thing. So uh, we, in, in the end, we did it, uh, but uh, in a different way. So we, um, we started uh, searching for a possible solution about the 24-7 technical support. And in the end, we uh, found a way to provide this thing. Um, and this thing was, a, was, um, um, was possible uh, thanks to KubeADM. So KubeADM is uh, the official installer for uh, Kubernetes. So when we uh, provided uh, our installation for Kubernetes, we were using uh, KubeADM. So some companies uh, can, um, um, can, can give you the, the support if you use the official installer. So what KubeADM uh, uh, is, re how KubeADM uh, is related with uh, KubeSpray? Well, from the latest version, KubeADM is used uh, under the hood by KubeSpray. So we are essentially compliant uh, with uh, this thing. So we can ask it also for uh, the technical support by other companies uh, that, that were uh, bigger than us. Um, and uh, a little overview about uh, KubeSpray. Uh, KubeSpray is a uh, Kubernetes 6 project. So it's a com um, project of interest by the community. So it has also a great community. Uh, so uh, when we uh, developed on KubeSpray, uh, of course, we also introduced, introduced some bug and they uh, fixed it uh, as soon as possible. Um, and uh, is, uh, essentially, it, it is used to deploy a production-ready cluster. Uh, it supports also the high availability. And uh, an another important thing is that uh, support uh, the most popular Linux distribution. So in our case, uh, um, be uh, how to say, be compliant with uh, our customer were um, really hard because uh, no one has the same uh, distribution. Uh, some someone uh, has some uh, hybrid uh, uh, distributions. So there's a company that we're using uh, Red Hat and uh, um, SUSE uh, together, so this was uh, really important for us. And uh, the last thing is that uh, KubeSpray is essentially an Ansible playbook. So we chose uh, KubeSpray also for uh, the simplicity of, uh, of Ansible. Um, we also were, mm, how to say, uh, we, we had some, ex uh, some uh, previous experience with, uh, with Ansible, so I think was a um, was great for us because we didn't have to uh, learn a, uh, um, another language or another thing. So we adopted Ansible. Uh, personally, I, I did uh, also another uh, open source project uh, with Ansible uh, that was named uh, Terrible uh, with uh, Terraform and Ansible. So, <laughs> <laughs> so this was uh, the introduction about uh, KubeSpray if you didn't know. Uh, so let's start uh, um, with the, the contribution that we provided. So um, the first thing that we did was to, um, to check the code uh, of KubeSpray, uh, check for the missing parameters uh, to achieve the CIS compliance. And then we uh, extracted this information and started providing uh, the implementations uh, to, the, to the project. So these are the most, most important, probably. Uh, so the support for the event rate limit uh, admission plugin that were, not, um, uh, were missing in, uh, in the code base. So we provided uh, this, this support. We also kept track uh, for some parameters that are useful for the, for the hardening. So the service account lookup, uh, the streaming connection idle timeout, uh, the make IP table uh, util chains. And also, we uh, created uh, the last one, um, the make Kubernetes owner parametric, because the CIS uh, uh, require uh, for, for set certain uh, files uh, specific ownership. So uh, this, this thing was not um, allowed before. Uh, now it is. So um, 
this is the overview about our contribution, our most important contribution for the CIS compliance. But uh, our work uh, was not only to achieve the CIS compliance, but also um, to achieve a, um, a good uh, hardening solution, because the customer were asking us for hardening solutions, not specifically uh, the for the CIS compliance. So actually, this was also for fun, um, uh, to, uh, how to say, provide uh, also their pull request. But what we did was to split the cube feature gates uh, variable, uh, because uh, at the beginning, uh, there were only one variable to configure all the feature gates uh, of the, the whole components. Uh, so we split the, the, the variable uh, into different components. Uh, we also added the, the second default uh, admission plugin for the kubelet. Um, and we hardened the kubelet uh, system D service. And in the end, uh, uh, we also provided an hardening setup guide on the Cube Spray documentation for people that want to uh, learn about uh, uh, and uh, understand uh, how to do this thing. So let's start uh, with the first contribution that we did. Uh, so the event rate limit uh, admission plugin. So what we did was to uh, support this uh, event, uh, so this uh, admission plugin. Uh, this admission plugin is uh, useful to mitigate uh, the problems uh, where the API server get flooded by event request. Um, it is really useful if you have a, a multi-tenant environment. So this is definitely our case. Um, and uh, how to say? Mm, let's think to an environment where. Uh, users uh, start to spawn uh, uh, some workloads, and uh, these workloads uh, are starting failing. Um, so these failures uh, generate uh, uh, error events, and this event can flood your uh, API server. Uh, obviously, if you you use the uh, the cluster only for few people, for few user, this uh, this event um, this admission plugin is not really useful. But let's think to uh, our customer uh, that were providing uh, access to external actors, so they were um, they were cloud providers, so they have a huge uh, amount of users. So this thing can uh, effectively uh, flood your uh, API server. Uh, the the types that you can limit are the the following one: uh, server namespace a user uh, source and object and so on and so forth. So what we did <coughs> was essentially to provide uh, for the final user a nice interface to set up the, uh, the admission plugin uh, before to um, install the cluster. So you can create uh, your, uh, your variables, uh, set up, uh, for example, for the namespaces, uh, specific bars, uh, specific uh, cache sites. And uh, when you install the, the cluster, uh, it is uh, already set up. Uh, so this was uh, one of the most important, probably, for our uh, user uh, user case. Uh, but also, we uh, provided the support for the streaming connection idle timeout, that was uh, uh, really relevant for us, because uh, it essentially defined the maximum time uh, of an idle session uh, before to be disconnected. So by default, uh, it's it is set up to four hours. That I think it's uh, a really long time, and uh, so lowering down this value, you are able to protect uh, yourself against uh, denial of service attacks. Uh, so in in our case, it was uh, really important also this parameter, and uh, what we did essentially was to provide a way to manage uh, this uh, this value uh, before the installation. Uh, so you you are not uh, subjected to uh, this default uh, value. Um, so that's it. Uh, let's say uh, let's see another contribution. Okay, uh, split featured gates variable. Uh, as I said before, uh, so uh, at the beginning uh, uh, this variable uh, was. Uh, um, was managing the whole components. So using this variable, you can essentially um, describe uh, 
the feature gates that uh, needs to be enabled in all the components. But this thing uh, is also uh, not so good because you are essentially um, providing the same uh, configuration for the whole components. And uh, this is not uh, really good because not all the components uh, needs to be configured in the same way. Uh, specifically, uh, the kubelet has, uh, has some nice uh, feature gates that uh, are not present in the other components. Um, so we split the, this variable and we provided a, a single variable for, uh, for each component. But you essentially, you can still use the, the legacy one, so the cube feature gates variable. So uh, that's another contribution. Uh, and speaking about the kubelet uh, feature gates, uh, the second default is one of the uh, of these. <coughs> uh, for people that uh, doesn't know, SecConf is a, a filter for syscalls uh, that uh, that is based on a set of uh, defined rules. And the second the second default admission plugin essentially, uh, when you enable this uh, this uh, this plugin, you are essentially uh, providing a default uh, second rule for all the workloads that you are going to spawn. So uh, by default, uh, you can have a, a little protection uh, using, uh, using SecConf. Uh, by, so just by default, you don't, you don't have to uh, do anything. And uh, this rule is, uh, of course, is uh, um, really generic. It's not really specific for, uh, for, your, uh, for your pod, but it's, uh, how to say, a good starting point at least. Um, so what we did, we, mm, uh, okay, so uh, just a few words about the, the admission plugin. So it has been introduced in uh, Kubernetes 122. Uh, so it's uh, uh, quite recent. Um, and uh, as I said, uh, it set the default profile from the unconfined rule that was uh, essentially an empty rule. So you were not uh, um, covered by any rules. Um, and set it to the runtime default. Uh, the runtime default is a rule that is provided by your container runtime. So in our case, we're container D, but it, it can also be um, Creo or another one. Uh, each one has uh, its runtime default uh, rule. And uh, it is set inside the security context of your pods. So when you, if you enable this admission plugin, uh, the new pods that are that are spawned uh, are provided with uh, this security context uh, with uh, the sec um, with uh, the, the second rule. Okay, so what we did uh, um, was to provide essentially uh, the way to uh, configure this thing uh, by the user because uh, you you have also to set up uh, certain files, uh, so we're not probably um, easy to do. Uh, and uh, you can just enable uh, the, the variable and place the, the admission plugin in the list of the kubelet uh, using, of course, the kubelet feature gate. Uh, that was the variable that we split before. And uh, on the left side, you can check uh, the, the rule, or at, or at least the, um, the available syscall, uh, if I remember well, uh, that are enabled uh, by the container runtime. So in this case, I think it's uh, a piece of code uh, taken from uh, container D. Okay. Okay, so last thing. Um, kubelet systemd service hardening. Uh, I would say that uh, I'm really proud uh, of this because uh, uh, I was just having fun with uh, contributions and I found this uh, nice uh, improvement. Uh, and this improvement, uh, I'm not still sure, but uh, probably is going to be added to the next uh, CIS benchmark guideline uh, as a sort of remediation. Um, so let's talk about uh, this, this, uh, this hardening setup, uh, starting from system D uh, to 2035. Uh, they provided uh, a, new, uh, a new set of sandboxing features, so you can set up your uh, service uh, sorry uh, you can set up your system D services uh, providing this sandboxing feature and you can also analyze uh, the exposure of this um, of this uh, this service 
uh, using the, the relative tool that is system D analyze security. And uh, this is an example. On the left side, uh, it's the output of, this, uh, of the command. So for each service that you are um, hosting in your, um, your server, you have uh, an exposure rank, um, a predicate, and also the happy status. Um, and on the right side, uh, you can check, does it work? Yeah, okay. Um, in this part, you can check, for example, the sandboxing feature that are, uh, have been provided uh, by systemd. Uh, so along with uh, uh, an useful uh, command, uh, it, this was just, just uh, for, for test, you can check the, the parameters that you can, you can enable or you can set up uh, with uh, um, certain uh, values. So what we did uh, in Cube Spray was to provide uh, this little uh, uh, improvement, so providing uh, an IP address deny and the IP address allow, because uh, uh, what we did essentially was to allow the cluster to communicate only with the control plane, uh, sorry, with only with um, the worker nodes. So uh, this thing was uh, related to the kubelet. The kubelet uh, is the component inside the worker node. So using this feature from systemd, uh, the kubelet is able to, to be contacted uh, only by the control planes. So if you are uh, an external actor in the same uh, network, uh, um, of the, wo the worker nodes, you will not be able to contact them. Uh, so this is a sort of, uh, sort of little firewall that you can apply to the worker nodes and uh, is provided uh, by systemd. Uh, so this is more or less the scenario. Uh, Here uh, there are the control planes, uh, an external uh, actor, uh, an attacker that want to uh, be con contact the, the, the kubelet, but this is not uh, enabled because uh, the, the systemd firewall, little firewall, is uh, blocking essentially this connection because the IP of the attacker is not uh, in the list, in the, in the white list. So this thing is, um, is done, uh, uh, how to say, automatically by kube spray because uh, uh, using kube spray you have the list of, of your worker nodes when you create your inventory. So you don't have to fill anything uh, because uh, this, this variable is generated by kube spray by itself. Uh, so is, you have just to use it uh, uh, enabling uh, this, this variable. So kubelet system the hardening and uh, uh, how to say, the magic happened. Um, so this was my last contribution. Uh, and uh, okay, yeah. Validation tools. So um, I, in I created also this slide because uh, uh, some people uh, ask it, uh, how uh, we can be sure that uh, this thing is, uh, is real, uh, how we can check that uh, the, the cluster is uh, compliant uh, with, uh, with the CIS. So uh, these tools are probably the most common. Uh, personally, I, I don't know uh, these two tools, but I, I know that are really common in the environment. Uh, but my favorite tools are uh, Kubebench and Kubescape. Um, so uh, Kubebench is the tool behind uh, Aqua Security uh, and is really specific for the CIS compliance. Uh, also, I think the author of uh, Kubebench uh, are also the author of the CIS benchmark uh, guideline. Uh, so it's really focused on the CIS. Instead, uh, Kubescape, uh, that is the tool that we develop uh, in Armo, and it's, mm, it's also the reason why I joined Armo one month ago, uh, it's a more uh, generic tool. I think, um, I, um, I would say, it's not related only to the CIS, uh, but it's, it is related also uh, to the NSA compliance uh, or the, the Mitre or other uh, framework guidelines. So it's not uh, specific for the CIS, but it covers uh, also other, um, other frameworks. Uh, so um, my suggestion is to use uh, probably these two tools, Kubebench and Kubescape, 
If you want to start using Cubescape, uh, please uh, send us some feedback. If you find some bug, probably I, I've introduced it. Um, and this is the overview about uh, Cubescape. Uh, you can have a, a nice uh, overview about the status of the, uh, the CIS compliance. And uh, that's it. Uh, so thanks uh, for your attention and keep your cluster safe. Time for questions. Um, thank you. To what level are CubeSpray compatible with managed Kubernetes cluster, AKS, EKS, and so on? Uh, actually, we provide the support uh, for AKS, um, and uh, we are planning also for the, for GKE and uh, the other one from Azure, uh, but are not still not implemented. Uh, but I think this morning uh, they started uh, working on it on uh, on the GKE. <laughs> so <laughs> if you need it, uh, just uh, ping us uh, in a few weeks. Cool. Thank you. More questions? Thank you very much, Alessio. Great, thank you.